I was living in Malibu, literally with you know, the sheriff calling our house saying we couldn't leave the house after 8 p.m. The beaches are closed. The trails are closed. And then while this is happening, then there were riots in Santa Monica, you know, one of the most picturesque touristic destinations in the United States. There were tanks on the streets and helicopters and all the stores were burned down in the middle of a pandemic. And it was around that time when I just said, fuck this shit, dude. <laughs> like, I don't know exactly what's going on, but like, you know, I had very been been very deeply connected to psychedelics for many years by that point. So just what I saw is brainwashing and of like this, you know, almost like takeover within the United States of uh, blasting us with so much confusion, which is a tried and true and well-documented CIA technique for interrogation. Why wouldn't that extend to the population level? Blast the population with so much confusion, bullshit, disinformation, it becomes almost impossible for people to know what's going on, where we're headed, who to trust. And that's to a degree what I see happening right now with this emergent psychedelic narrative is that 2017, 2018, psilocybin and MDMA were respectively granted FDA breakthrough therapy designations, which means they're supposed to be expedited and fast-tracked and available. And all of the conversation and talking points revolved around accessibility. We want access. We want equitable access. That doesn't mean shit, dude. Equitable access is teaching people how to grow mushrooms and empowering them if they want to. If you're talking about equitable access, we have that. You know, It's very easy to grow. It's very easy to share. And in many cases, it's extraordinarily safe if you do your homework and your due diligence if you're part of a community that's transparent and that looks out for you. Like these things exist and we have lots of examples of models of where they're working and have been working. And I think that's a problem if somebody wants to control the narrative and wants you to be you know, dependent on, on uh, daddy, big daddy, big brother going to take care of us. You know, this time of chaos and confusion and, and all this, like we need somebody who has a sense of order to rule with an iron fist and to make sure we can't leave our houses at 8 p.m. And mm. I wonder about that, because as you said earlier, just like this establishment narrative for the last 50 plus years has been about how you take LSD or mushrooms or whatever, it's going to scramble your brain like a fried egg. And now they want to pivot based on a few studies that they funded or, you know, that interest connected to the corporate academic elite are the ones funding. And they're going to say, oh, so sorry. Actually, they're quite safe. As long as you do them this way, as long as you take this patented novel molecule with two therapists in a padded room, that's actually okay. And I'm like, hey, you've been lying to us for the last, you know, who knows how many years. And it's happening with cannabis too, right? There's a, a, a push towards more federally um, legal cannabis with these massive multi-billion dollar conglomerate, conglomerates who are, who are pushing into it. But again, at the end of the day, um, I'm not an economist. You know, I'm not an expert. I, I seem to be pretty good as a, as a satirist. So uh, this is just sort of my like rambling, uh, incoherent underlying thoughts that inform some of the satire that I make. No, I love it. I love it. And it, 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 yeah, it's, it's interesting watching what is happening because I often use this, this analogy of, uh, when homosexuality was criminalized in the UK and what happened is it kind of got to a point and they went, Oh fuck, we're wrong. Tore up the laws. And they just went, it's wrong. We just tore up the fucking law. They didn't legalize. They didn't go, oh, let's keep this law and go, actually, you can hold your hands three times a day if you have a permit. You can be gay in this area between nine and nine. You're allowed four kisses with your partner. There wasn't a regulation of licensing. There wasn't any state control. They just went, fuck, we were wrong. Not in these words. It took a long time for them, to, but they just literally went, there's the law, gone. And overnight, obviously, there was then cultural backlash, and there was a lot of bigotry. There was a lot of fucking homophobia. I'm not saying there wasn't, but in terms of the structure of the law, you couldn't just be, you kissed a man, get you in a cell, in a court, you're done. You're going to prison. Do you know what I mean? And it's that's what's missing from the drugs conversation, is actual liberty, is actual freedom, and actual fucking justice. The, the, they can't just go, oh, well, yeah, you can have cannabis now, and oh, yeah, you can all oh, be flying to Amsterdam, or you can go, you go to Colorado, or, or Canada, or, and there's these kind of jokes of this thing. Yet, when you fly back through that border security, if they found you with a fucking bit of bud, what are they going to What are they gonna do to you? Do you know what I mean? If you're not one of the mag people that has the magic piece of paper, your little prescription here in the UK, 
you know, or your can card or whatever else, which again, all of these systems are a form, no offense to can card, or the racketeering. It's an exploitation of a, a, an archaic law that shouldn't continue to exist. And I see it worse in psychedelics because as you say, without giving too much of the sort of the game away for people, I mean, there's many great resources out there, but if you get a small amount, yeah, you get several flushes and the amount that you can get back on the return when they're dry versus their market value and they hold their value in the UK to about 10 pound a gram, that's going to get me in a lot of trouble, YouTube. This is for edification purposes only, YouTube, um, versus what they will charge you. In Oregon, for example, there was one institution that's open not, not too long ago. I think it was the end of 21 or early 22. And um, I think it was about $4,000. And you looked at it and you went, how much did they actually give you over the, the, the day session of it? And I think it was 1.4, 1.5 grams of mushrooms. And I'm like, wow. And it's the yeah. same, with, same with cannabis. Like you can grow a quality cannabis at home again for education purposes for 20 quid an ounce with, with over a cycle, dependent on the number of plants and everything. You can get that even lower than that. But I say that for an average grower putting in an average plant, getting an average yield back, you can get that down about 20 quid minus your labor. In the open market, that's 200 quid for an ounce as an average rate, you know, it's sort of in the UK. It's, it's the, the margins then come from uh, from profit. And what most of these things, most of our communities have done forever is we haven't really profited. We haven't sought to. We have sought to recoup our losses for what we've done. And then people have donated to each other to ensure that we can continue to create the spaces to do it. They've always worked in a in a non-profit in the sense that there's never really been your fucking shaman in your Ferrari driving around or whatever, because someone would see him and go, well, he's not a fucking shaman. Why am I going to listen to this prick? Did you know what I mean? It, they, were, they were separate, whereas now it's it's almost, you look at the psychedelic people and you go, well, are they rich? Oh, but he's rich on psychedelics. This guy's got it together. It's like this hypnotization has got worse over time. And I feel it's like, we're not as racist as we used to be. We're not as hateful to each other as we used to be, but we're ever more classist. The better your accent, the more fucking money you got. You're like, this guy's a genius. And it's like you were saying before about who gets to succeed. It's best story. So it's this guy goes, oh, I was in the NFL and I hurt myself and you know, I felt suicidal because I had that brain injury thing. And I tried mushrooms one time. I'm doing one of your skits here, I think, fucking for you. Do you know what I mean? And then and that guy, then the hedge fund comes across to him and goes, oh, you're going to front our company for us. And it just, this it, it's all so, it's not real because anybody you could put up there from us wouldn't want to be up there. Do you know what I mean? So we're not, we can't be represented in their system and we can't equally represent them because we're so angry at them because not only are they still saying we're bad and criminalizing us and mushroom seizures actually have increased in the US, US from 500 pounds in 2017 to 18, 1,800 pounds in uh, 2022. So raids are increasing for productions, obviously increasing as well. The same is happening in cannabis. They're saying they're legalizing and they're creating access while then using that money to crack down on the people that are doing it without paying them first. That's a mob, right? That That's what the mafia do, yeah?